Hello and welcome to Call to the News, the Watch It Play News Show. I'm Matthew Jude and explore. Explore. That's the fourth one, isn't it? Explore. Well, it's too late now. The 15th annual Golden Geek Awards, one of the biggest awards in board gaming, have come and gone like... Well, like my chances of winning a Golden Geek Award. Some of the biggest takeaways were Micro Macro winning Best Light Game, Lost Ruins of Arnok taking Best Medium, and Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion taking Best Heavy Game. Other winners include Undaunted North Africa for two-player game and Dune Imperium for Best Card Game. The takeaway for me, which again, wasn't a Golden Geek Award, my podcast came in second, so clocks. The takeaway is that there wasn't a massive sweeping winner as there have been in previous years with games such as Pandemic Legacy, Wingspan and the original Gloomhaven. To me that makes the awards more exciting and frankly in my opinion more interesting. It's nice to see a spread of games recognised and perhaps this is down to the minor changes made in the categories this year as we spoke about in the last episode. But however you look at it, I didn't win. But in a slightly more editorialised news segment than most, I'm looking forward to seeing this evolution of the awards and how it moves forward next year. Let us know if your favourite game won in the comments and congratulations to everyone. And how far can the definition of card game really be pushed? Pretty far. Also far, the distance of other planets from our own, which is the masterful segue that brings us this episode's sponsor, Cryo from Asmodee, Canada. In Cryo, you find yourself aboard a colony spaceship. Well, at least you did until mounting tensions led to an anonymous act of sabotage sending the ship hurtling to the surface of a frozen, uncharted planet. And so two to four players lead separate hostile factions competing to survive and claim control over the underground caverns on a remotely ice planet. Act quickly and strategically to avoid further sabotage, send out drones to claim resources and save your crew, and play multi-use cars to your advantage. But hurry, Nightfall will be coming soon, bringing with it space weevils. And that might, might not sound scary, but on this planet they are six meters tall. Follow the link in this video's description to find Cryo at your local toy and hobby store and start making the barren chunk of weevil infested space rock you're hopelessly stranded on a home. <laughs> Isle of Cats, the polyomino game where I think technically you are Kidnapping Cats is getting two brand new expansions. The Isle of Cats Kittens and Beasts introduces you to you bet your nelly kittens and beasts. Ancient beasts that need to befriend the cats if you plan on rescuing them. And kittens, which really is, well, all I really need to say about that. Well, it's a kittens expansion for Isle of Cats and I'm totally on board for it. Get it? On board, because the other expansions of Boat Pack, which is a fleet of brand new boats, so it seems as though new player board options will be available, mixing up the polyomino puzzle with brand new varying challenges. There's a bunch more stuff, it seems, and it's all coming to Kickstarter on May 25th. <laughs> Promenade, which isn't a prom flavoured soda, also it's pronounced promenade. I know that, was a game I really liked the look of back in 2019 when I first saw it, though it was really hard to get your hands on, like some type of trans-dimensional eel. So, I was really happy to learn that the game has been picked up by Rio Grande, renamed Art Deco, and is going to be released towards the end of the year. The game itself involves trying to gather together a valuable deck of both gold and paintings, which are both used as currencies, and you'll be deck building your way into manipulating markets, acquiring space in galleries, and trying to balance what you have on display with what you have in your hands and I'm really happy to finally be able to grab myself a copy or get one in some type of elaborate art heist situation. <laughs> Our next story centers on Taco Bell. The only thing I know about Taco Bell is abandoned sauce packets in glove compartments long forgotten. Check your glove compartment, I, I know they're there. But I also know that Chaz is a big fan of food served in decorative wrappers so here he is with more. Well, Matthew, you have come to the right place. 
Publisher Ravensburger recently announced the Taco Bell Party Pack card game coming later this year in which you and up to five of your competitively carnivorous compatriots conspire to collect various Taco Bell menu items, such as soft tacos, beefy five-layer burritos, chicken quesadillas, and the ever-elusive cheesy gordita crunch, all in an attempt to feed a crew of, quote, Taco Bell fans. And if that sounds like a bit of a stretch to you, then realizing that three out of five sizes of this Taco Bell sauce packet tracksuit on the Taco Bell website have sold out should make you believe that yes, there are indeed ravenously dedicated Taco Bell fans out there. In the game, each crunch coveting crew member comes with a specific craving that needs to be sated, and doing so earns Crave Chips, tokens that look like tortilla chips and also have a surprise amount of points revealed at the end of the game. Crunchy, indeed. Players can also use sauce cards to help snag food items and win. Because what else are you going to do with sauce packets other than wear them on a $70 tracksuit that you purchased from fast food company's website? And I am excited for this game, not because owning it will help satisfy my nacho cheese addiction without requiring another angioplasty, but because this has potential to be a tabletop game based on a fast food IP done right. Uh, today, the reigning champion of games based on fast food franchises has, arguably, been the McDonald's game published by Suzanne Sheldon's favorite publisher, Milton Bradley, in 1975. 1975! What were you, like... Negative 14 at that point? That is over 46 years during which fast food chains have had ample opportunities to dethrone Ronald McDonald's tabletop romp as the best board game based on a cuisine served to you in a bag through a window in your car. But it hasn't happened. Oh, sure, many have tried, but they failed. In-N-Out Burger couldn't oust it with their half-hearted in and out Opoly in the year 2000. Burger King couldn't dethrone it in 2012 with their Burger King edition of Uno, which, in a supposed money-saving maneuver, lacked skips, reverses, draw four wilds, and the numbers 8, 9, and 0. Sure. And even Kentucky Fried Chicken laid an egg with the KFC Travel Game, a memory-based card game in a Simon Says style, which earns a whopping 1.0 rating on Board Game Geek. So this is it, Taco Bell. This is your chance to introduce a drive through designed game to the market that finally, cleanly, and cleverly combines crafty gameplay with crunchy comestibles, merging this hobby that so many enjoy so much with the real-life food franchise that so many enjoy too much. Back to you, Matthew. Real-life board games. What a world that would be. I mean, if you did want to walk around a real-life board game, I suppose you could make the whole thing in something like Planet Zoo. But only the most ridiculous person would spend the time to make that because it would be a huge undertaking and frankly nonsense all over. Plus the statues would be like 200 foot tall. I know that because Nick and Mike Murphy, the brothers Murph, totally did that. They made Baron Park in Planet Zoo. Uh, you can check out that video. It's nonsense. <laughs> Voidfall has been announced by Mind Clash Games, by Nigel Buckle and David Turchy. And what drew my attention to it was the art, because the art's by Ian O'Toole, so naturally it looks incredible. It's a new 4X game aimed at bringing the genre to Euro enthusiasts, which to me is a much more exciting sentence than you may think. And as you do all the 4X things, expand, exterminate, exploit, and xylophone, in a Euroy way, you can win by defeating the Voidborn. Sound lovely in a solo or co-op version, or by defeating your rivals in the competitive mode. It looks very impressive and will be out sometime next year. <laughs> Crimes and Capers was announced by Renegade Games, which interested me as it's being pitched as a modern reimagining of those classic murder mystery party games where you'll be passing and collecting information, solving escape room style puzzles and taking on unique roles also uncover a mystery. And it's perhaps that role playing element which makes it stand out to me. The two announced so far in the new line of games are High School Hijinks, where you take on the role of 90s kids to try and work out who framed Romy, which either sounds like a game about a wrongfully accused teen or a rabbit animated by Robert Zemeckis. 
and Lady Leona's Last Wishes, which is based during the turn of the century where you'll be playing a group of high society toughs or hardworking servants who need to collaborate to solve a mystery and find Leona's treasure by working through the secrets in her will. It says coming soon on the Renegade website, so coming soon is what I'll say to you. <laughs> Funko, the makers and providers of bobbly-headed chibi collectibles, have announced not only record high sales for quarter one, but on the back of it, 40 new games coming this year. 40. Four, is it 40 games? I mean, what these games are is anyone's guess, but we do know that a new version of Marvel Battleworld is among them. I'm imagining a roster of family weight games with a host of intellectual properties attached to them, but that is literally just my best guess. But we don't have long to wait, it would seem, before we find out. I mean, they did just announce a Seinfeld themed party game, so it, it could be anything. That's my Seinfeld impression, and I finally, finally had a chance to show it off. <laughs> Oink Games are launching a Kickstarter to take their games to the Nintendo Switch. They tweeted about it the other day along with a link to a Kickstarter page, but it seems as though they may be bringing the Push Your Luck laden Deep Sea Adventure and lovely set collection game startups. They have a lot of games, so I'm looking forward to what they're going to be bringing to the table. And Oink Games have made some moves into the Switchiverse, releasing Takeshi and Hiroshi and their upcoming Tiger Trio's Tasty Travels, which sounds like Chaz named it. So it looks like Oink have digital as well as analog plans moving forward. <laughs> And finally, I saw some news coming out of Stonemaier Games that really sparked a huh type sound from a face at about 3am. It seems that Jamie Stegmaier has officially cemented a price guarantee policy. And all the details can be found on their official website, but it's essentially the idea that if you buy anything from their web store, but find it cheaper elsewhere in the next 20 days, they'll refund you the difference. And while this is more of a business news item, it is interesting because I can see arguments for and against this, but in many ways it seems that buying from them directly, depending on shipping costs, I suppose, will be a more viable option and therefore support the company the best. But will this price policy be taken on by other companies? Is it a trend that we will see moving forward? Only time will tell. And so will you, if you let us know in the comments below your thoughts on it. And that's it. That's the news. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, stay safe and take care. Mm -hmm.